right, so in this little lecture here, what I'd like to do is just give folks an overview, since this week's topic is JavaScript and jQuery, of what exactly JavaScript is. Now, the biggest thing I want to point out to you is a lot of people will just assume that JavaScript is like Java Lite. Java is a object-oriented programming language, which is kind of just beyond the scope of this course, but we be aware, we call it JavaScript. Don't shorten it to Java. So to this point in the class, we have been working with creating web pages using two markup languages. We use HTML as our skeleton, and then to add design elements, we've been using CSS or your cascading style sheets. There is one more element though, which is JavaScript. So if this is my structure of my body, and this is the stylization of it, then JavaScript kind of adds a can-do element to the web page. What can it do? So with JavaScript programming, we can ask, for instance, for a user's name and give a personalized welcome. We can also go through and add in dates. We can add in, oh, uh, different types of interactive elements. So really, JavaScript is the big piece that gives us a lot more interaction with a website. Now, one thing that you'll often hear people also say about JavaScript, so you are aware, is we still consider this a front-end scripting language. Now, what does that mean? Front-end means that we are not actually sending this anywhere and storing the information anywhere. So it's not going to some server behind the scenes and being stored for us. It only works on your front-end and we can use it for layout, but also too, we can use it as far as just collecting small data. So again, like I said, you know, probably the biggest example is, you know, personalized greetings is probably the easiest one for the scope of this course. There was a time where we could do some, you could do some pretty nasty things with JavaScript. In the olden days of the internet, we were not exactly smart about JavaScript and we would often use, I'm sure you've heard the phrase cookies, which are locally stored on somebody's machine. Well, some web designers and developers, we didn't exactly make the most ethical decisions and we would ask for things like credit card information and then we would store it as a cookie locally on that person's computer. So JavaScript is not really a secure language. By using this cookie element here, this made it very easy for people to kind of scrape, hack, whatever term you want to use as far as a person's personal computer and get that information. We have since kind of moved away from this. While we do have simpler things with cookies stored, um, we don't really collect user information when it comes to uh, JavaScript. Now, also adding to the JavaScript discussion here. JavaScript, you will also hear it called that you are working with it in its vanilla form. That means this is the core language. Now, with that in mind, one thing to point out to you is we actually really don't use JavaScript too much from a programming standpoint. Instead, what we have are called libraries. These are built on a language. So in this case, the one that I'm going to talk about here is called jQuery. 
jQuery is built on the Java, vanilla JavaScript language, but it has a lot of shorthands and adds more, it's more robust. jQuery was primarily a library that was designed for mobile interaction. I don't know how many of you remember like when we started to have phones that were capable of mobile des of opening websites where you had to pinch to see your websites. You still actually have that on some web pages today. The idea of jQuery, especially its mobile library, was to alleviate that, that we could still have fluid, responsive websites and have that interactivity that JavaScript gave to us. So let me go ahead here. This isn't part of the course, but in case you're interested, I want to pop open here jQuery's actual website as far as its library. jQuery has grown pretty immensely. It's still, it's one of the older libraries as far as JavaScript is concerned, but you have several as far as jQuery's user interface and also jQuery mobile. These two libraries, accessible in Dreamweaver, though to be honest with you, they take a lot of fighting with to get them to function. jQuery uh, is, like I said, probably one of the older library groups. JavaScript has come a long, long way. You'll hear people talk about Angular and Node.js are some of the new heavy hitters as far as JavaScript is concerned. However, these are not drag and drop in Dreamweaver, unfortunately. And that's kind of the other thing that I really wanted to kind of bring up to everybody before I get into the demo. JavaScript is kind of, you know, our max. And what do I mean by that? JavaScript and its libraries, again, we have jQuery available to us. It really is helpful to know JavaScript vanilla, at least, which means, yes, you are getting into learning a scripting language. The capabilities, at least in my experience, having done both sides, where both the drag and drop of Dreamweaver, but also actually just scripting and developing websites using code, jQuery does leave a lot to be desired. Um, as somebody who knows the languages, it's less aggravation to me to actually go in and just edit the JavaScript directly in the code. Now, last thing here I want to point out is how JavaScript is actually integrated into your websites and web pages. Similar how we have an HTML document that we then have kind of the little link to an external CSS document, you can actually have the same thing where you have a .js document or JavaScript document. This helps keep the code a little bit cleaner in the HTML, but also, too, it's a good way to separate out that should you get errors, you know that the errors are contained. That if something truly breaks, you can just detach your JavaScript file and then remake it. So that's one way as far as we control JavaScript. So now if we go ahead and jump into Dreamweaver here. So one thing that I did with Dreamweaver is I did make just a basic jQuery file here. Now I'm reusing the project for here, but I'd like to show you here a little bit since I was uh, testing it a little bit earlier, what it actually generates for you when you start diving into the different jQuery elements. And I'll show you them here in a moment as far as the insert panel. But I wanted to show you here what actually gets added in as far as your assets are concerned. So notice for each of these, for the mobile and the asset, you not only get 
specific JS files, but you also get CSS files, very similar to the responsive web layout. Likewise with the jQuery, you get the jQuery mobile JS, and then it's also its CSS. Now just to show you here what the uh, CSS actually looks like, or the JavaScript looks like, when you start getting into things such as libraries, this is a prime example of why we kind of know JavaScript before we dive into things like this. These type of JS files, they are not meant to be read by humans. While yes, you have a lot of different elements here that if you know the language, you would have recognized them. There's a reason it's just one giant line here as far as notice my numbering system here. I only have two numbers there for the two lines. The reason is, is like I said, this really isn't meant to be read. Normally, we will sit there and we will have an understanding of the language that it just works for us. To give you a for instance here, I've come back into the HTML document and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and jump into insert. Now, under the insert menu, you actually have two items here. You have jQuery mobile and then also you have jQuery UI. To talk a little bit about mobile, mobile was our answer as far as making scalable web pages. It's kind of similar to the responsive web layout. However, when we first started with jQuery, it was more about getting the content across versus having a super nice, super sleek layout. So for instance here, just to show you, if I choose a page and I say, okay, I'm gonna leave it as the default, I'm gonna let it use the jQuery library sources, etc., and then I say, okay, this is what my page looks like here. It's not the most glamorous page, but it does give me control here. And what I'll do is I'll add a layout grid inside of this content area. So I'm gonna go ahead and nest that. And oh, we'll do one row and we'll do three columns. So there you can see each of the block elements and I'll go ahead and delete out content. And I'm going to save all, tell it OK, make sure you update those. And you can see now, similar to your responsive web layouts, notice how you have each of these jQuery layouts. So let's go ahead and test drive this and see what it looks like. So here you have each of your header and footer. You also have the block elements. And you can see how it scales, very similar to your responsive web layouts. So this was an option that we used for a very long time. Uh, it is still in use, especially if you're just trying to make a quick website to have a presence on the web. It's not a terrible choice. It's not like it's dated or on the way out. Also too, just to show you, like if I make another blank document here and I will call this, you know, jQuery demo continued and we'll create. Well, you have the mobile elements here. If I come into the jQuery UI, I can also add in some additional items such as the accordion here. So, whoops, it wants me to save. So I'll say jQuery and we'll call it UI example. And there we go. So now you have each of your elements here in the accordion. So I can say, for instance, I don't know. If I come in here and say, try to get that typed in there. As you can see, it can be a little bit touchy. There we go. So I can change the header. Maybe I have a content section in here that I don't know. Um, maybe for some reason I want to come into HTML and I need to add an image in this section. So maybe I'll nest it in there. We'll grab just one of the default images. And there we go. So now I have that content section. So maybe I delete that out.
And just to show you here, let's go ahead and save so that you can see what the accordion looks like. And there you can see it's extended out. Now I can close and just jump into the other sections as well. And notice too, you scale it. It's not like it's breaking the web page or anything like that. It's got that scalability just like your responsive web layouts. So this was something that I at least wanted to show all of you. You could embed something like this in your responsive web layouts if you choose. So maybe you want to have an accordion option. However, I got to be honest in this day and age, I don't see too many websites. Like if you commit to the responsive or bootstrap layouts, I don't see too many websites actually integrating like a jQuery UI embedded in the web page because a lot of what the responsive website does with bootstrap those are addressing a lot of the things that we use with the jquery ui elements to address again though comparing the two jquery is a lighter library however bootstrap i'd say is a much more robust library so it depends on what you're trying to get done both have their places in web design and development. Both are pretty available in Dreamweaver, but as you can see, you really got to do some, you really got to have a good control over understanding each of the different elements as far as the jQuery mobile is concerned versus the responsive web design, which is much more, you got a lot more layout options there. So, I hope this gives you a good overview. jQuery is not required for the course, but I do want you to be aware of it in the event that you do run into a Dreamweaver site that maybe utilizes uh, the jQuery side of things.